Welcome to today's um, little vlog. I happened to be passing through uh, Wicklow and I couldn't help but stop at Avoca, which is set in this beautiful valley. Um, Avoca, it was set up in 1723, so it's almost three, it is actually 300 years operating this year. Um, it was set up as a cooperative weaving mill set up along the banks of the Avoca River. Uh, local farmers would grind their corn and spin and weave the wool for clothing and for the local miners. Um, times were pretty tough in rural Ireland, but it seemed to be some uh, a kind of industrial centre at the time. First, it used to be um, only uncoloured yarn used for weaving, very practical sort of stuff. Um, but later, uh, when the when the when the mill was taken over by three sisters, they introduced colour in a big way, um, and you can see that here. These absolutely stunning colourways. Originally, they would have been naturally dyed, and one of the sisters was a, a gardener and she was uh, one of the main reasons so they used to have a massive dye garden a dye farm and they used to have all of the yarns dyed later on in the video you'll see one of the original pieces that was um hand was dyed with uh, natural dyes from around the avoca um center so there was the three sisters that took it over. They actually lived quite close by. They had very interesting connections to the royal family and a lot of the high fashion houses. Um, one of the uh, older sister was the kind of business mind. Um, so if you see here, Miss Winifred was the gardener, three Wynn sisters, and Emily up the top there, she was the business, business mind. And then we have the artist, Miss Veronica. So without these three working together, Avoca wouldn't be where it is today, internationally renowned. That's a letter from some royal lady in waiting. <laughs> short videos to show you, right? So you can see what the equipment looks like yeah. in this room. So we'll start off over here with the two flying shuttle rooms. So the next one called John Kay is credited with the invention of these looms. Uh, he was actually a mill owner himself. And of course, like all mill owners, they wanted more and more and more. So he had that problem of the slowness of moving a shuttle mm. by hand across the loom. You'll recognize the warp yeah. and your warp yeah. threads going through. So this is mohair, about yeah. 500 threads there. And we have our four shafts and our heddles. So again, each particular strand of the mohair is going through a very specific heddle there to make that pattern. And the problem that uh, John Kay had to solve was the problem of the shuttle mm. and making the shuttle move really quickly. So we're going to go from something similar to this, mm -hmm. a small hand shuttle that you'd be moving across with your weft thread, making the mm -hmm. pattern. And John Kay came up with this. Mm -hmm. and this is called a flying shuttle. Ooh. Now, it's much, much bigger, much heavier. We've got our weft thread setting inside here and just coming out through that little slot on the side. Yeah. Metal ends here Stoppers. to protect the wood. Yeah. And the original wheels would have been metallic. Oh. Right. Okay. So this shuttle is going to sit inside a shuttle box on this oh. side of the loom. And we have a shuttle box on the other side of the loom over there. Now, here's the thing. This is called a pick at the end here. Okay. It's like an actuator and it's connected via these cords and lots of wood to the center here in the loom. So what's going to happen is you're going to have your weaver sitting here, mm -hmm. controlling the shafts with his feet. Okay. Okay. And this is for this pattern here. It's a very simple twelve-inch square mohair pattern. Yeah. So they're only going to use two up and two down. Pedals. Yeah. More pedals you'll see in action over there. So by pulling down on the cord, you see the pick activates the end of the shuttle, and it's going to throw the shuttle from this side all the way across to the other side okay. to the shuttle box on the other side over there. And as it does, it leaves that weft thread behind it. Uh huh. Yes. Then by pulling down on the cord in the opposite direction. It's going to activate the pick over there and send the shuttle flying all the way back. So you pull it this way. This way for that. Ah. And, and it's kind of like a oh, twist of the arm. Oh, yes, yes, and yes, yes, yes. flying back. And as you're doing that, you have to coordinate yes. your feet moving the shafts. And also your left arm pulling back on the handball to line up that last weft thread. Yeah. And that's going to massively speed up the weaving process. Yes. Now, I have a short video to show you. Yeah. Martin actually doing that. So putting it all together at speed. I'd love that. And it's... 
So now this is in real time, obviously. So this is how quick that shuttle's moving. Yeah. So this was a massive a game changer. A when I did. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this, this was rocket science for the 1700s. This was incredible. Yeah. So much so actually, the British government recognised the, the effect of it. Uh, if you tried to export one of these looms out of the UK or the plans to make it, you could face 10 years in prison. Wow. But the weavers at the time roundly hated these looms and would set fire to them wherever they found them or burn down the buildings they were housed in oh because they were seen as a huge threat to their livelihoods. Of course. So it took a long time for people to come around to the idea mm -hmm. that actually by producing more fabric there weren't going to be more jobs. John Kay himself had to go to France to avoid being lynched <laughs> uh, for a time before he could come back. Oh my God. So again, you have a piece of equipment if you think about it. Invented 1733, still being used here in the 1900s, or the, the 1990s, I should say. Yeah. So, and it was, the 88 was the first year that power looms arrived in here. To arrive back in 88. Okay. Um, and there, the patterns on those are controlled by punch cards. So, one of these. Uh huh. So it's a binary code system. Mm -hmm. So each hole is in a very specific location. And the machine follows the pattern. And would this pattern now be like kept? Oh yeah. Do you know yeah. like this is the circus pattern or Absolutely, whatever? Yeah. yeah, that's it exactly. So, so they're all minded. if they have a brand new one <laughs> yes. and it needs to be made on on these two looms here, what yeah. they'll do is they'll come up and see the machine just behind you. Oh, oh and my you've gosh! Got blank sheets of plastic underneath there, oh. so they'll actually have to transfer the weaving data Lads. onto punch card data, yes. which can take a day depending on how yeah, complicated yeah, the pattern yeah, is, yeah. and then they'll oh. install it on the loom when they're going to make that pattern, and off they go. Would you have to like? Do you, do you, do you, would you have like a small loom for testing that you've got it right? Yeah, the design, <laughs> the, that's exactly it. Fiona and Vanessa are the two designers. Okay. So they actually have a, a small, a small loom. Yeah. So all the new designs that we've done now for the 300, yeah. they were all initially created on those on little, their little looms testers. and data transfer. Yeah. Now the other four looms work on a very basic, they're from the 1990s, so they have a very basic design program over on them. here. Okay. So they don't use the punch cards. No. no. But again, it's the same principle exactly as we have on the flying shuttle loom yes. there. We have our warp. Mm -hmm. We're going to have our shafts, but now we have mm. eight instead of four. Mm. Oh, and by the way, we've gone up to 2,640 individual threads. Oh, so man. You can imagine tying in or that process. Oh, stop. That would take That's, you about three weeks. That will Make, take me a, about seven it, years. It's a day and a half's work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. For, um, for an expert. Again, we're going to have to thread each one through. And then we have these metal droppers and each dropper sits on an individual thread. And that's really important because once oh. the loom is running, yes. if a thread breaks, that would affect the pattern, the uh, finished pattern. Uh -huh. We have to know about it. So if the thread does break, the dropper descends, it stops the loom, yeah. and then the weaver knows exactly which one's broken and they can tie in a new thread. That is so handy. That is <laughs> vital. It's vital because otherwise you could it could be running for yeah. like, a, you know, the five days or six days it's going mm. to run and you're not noticing that you're missing a thread and the pattern's changed and yeah. all of a sudden you've... you've the, whole, the whole ream is gone. Yeah. Ruined. Totally. Mm. We're waiting on spare parts for it. Oh. Um, and again, you know, old machines and yeah, and so, yeah. So the, the people who look after finishing for us look after finishing at the minute as well. Okay. So I most of most of the week I'm down here uh, cutting, but the fringing machine. If you come around to this side here, you can actually see the jaws are open on it. Oh. So. As you can see, between each throw, yes, you've got that section where it's just the warp threads. There's no weft thread going across. So you just advance it to leave a gap. That's it's yeah. part of the design. So on the loom, uh, it just advances that distance there on the loom okay. without any weft, and then yes. the weft kicks in again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it comes down here, as we run it through, we have these outer jaws catch the edge uh -huh. of each of the throws. Okay. And then the inner jaws will come and clamp. Yeah. And separate out the warp threads into groups. Okay. But instead of like clamping down and going through to cut, what they actually do is they force uh, by moving sideways. They, force they actually the, force the, the warp heads to twist around. <gasps> and then when it's done that, it shoots a thin thread through the center of the fringe. And that means that when the jaws release and the fabric wants to go back to its old shape, it can't. It has to stay it's twisted fixed. and then it relaxes into that shape, oh. which is what you can see here. So this is a new... Uh, mohair tweed and this is oh the, so this, this is, is the thread that's this is the gone through it. yeah this is after the fringing process and you can see the thread running all the way through there to hold okay. the fringes in place wow so, and then that's cut yeah so as we run it through the cutting machine here there's different tensions applied to get yes. the, to get the fabric stretched just the right amount yeah yeah and then the, the guillotine will cut either side of that 
Is this, uh, you know, when you're saying you're cutting, are yeah. you wetting at all? No. No, so it's not wet no, blocked no, no. or anything no, like that? Nothing okay. like that. And then if we're doing scarves, obviously, on a run of scarves, we've got six scarves across the width mm. of the fabric. Mm. And mm. there'll be that designed in line between each scarf. Yeah. So we'll move our circular blades here across on the bar, line them up with where the start of each scarf begins yes. and ends. And then we'll run them through. But again, it takes one or two people here watching to make sure that there's yeah. like tiny distance yeah. where the, the blades have to hit. Mm. And if they veer off, you've just I ruined know. the scarf. I know. So yeah. we've got to keep them running through. So yeah. it's a stressful job to make the scarves. <laughs> but otherwise, uh, it'll run through the machine, cut at the end, and then we literally take them off at the front and yeah. we have to fold them in a very specific way before mm. they go down for labeling. Yeah. So each one has to be folded so that the section where the label's going to go has to be uh, on the bottom and the right when the, yeah. the person doing the labeling looks at it so they can yeah, just pick no. it up, label, they don't have to reorientate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, no wasting time. And you know when uh, finishing, you're saying you're finishing, yeah. when does the finishing process happen? All right, so traditionally what would happen would be you'd have the roll of fabric coming off the loom. Yes. It goes down to what we call mending. So it has to be inspected down there. Okay. Assuming everything is fine, it's then sent out to the finishers. Now, we would normally take it back here for fringing and Afterwards. then send it out. But okay. Because the machine yeah, isn't yeah, working properly. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're looking after that fringing process. Okay. Well. So then once it's finished, you ca you take yeah, it back. And then you a later, it'll come back to us here. Mm -hmm, so these mm -hmm. are rolls that have come back from the finishers. Oh. And these are waiting now to be cut. Yes. These are lined up to be cut. Yeah. So tomorrow morning, Jackie, I'm not here in the morning, but Jackie and myself would normally get stuck in. We'd have yeah. an order for the week. Yeah. Or for the next couple of days, we yeah. know what we need to cut, what, whatever the priority is, and we'll yeah. just lash into it and get it going. Amazing. Like, this might be a stupid Six brand new patterns for the 300. Oh. And then there's actually a load of new patterns that were coming online this year anyway. So the mill is actually Real. up to here. Wow. Like, we've never been this busy. Wow. I love so this. I'm gonna sh uh, oh, by the way, the, those looms don't use a shuttle. Oh. Shuttles are too slow. Of course. So, we have what's called a rapier system. So I'm going to show you that on screen now. That's so it's again, sounds short, short video exotic. So this is this is the shuttle coming yeah, across. The rapier coming across. Yeah, it's doing the job that the shuttle was doing on the flight. Yes, shuttle. and there's another one that comes yeah, and the, the little handover. Yeah, handover the weft. So it's that's adorable. Weft, yeah. <laughs> and it does it how many times per minute? 230 to 240 times every minute. Jesus. The Donegal and the mohair looms are slower as well. Yeah. Than 70, 180. Yeah, that is amazing. Look at them. They're, they're like kissing. <laughs> you you so could say cute. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, like in the, it, you know, I mentioned frames. like in the heyday of the Wind Sisters, here's 70 people involved in all the production here. Like that was yeah. massive for uh, uh, a business in a small community like, like this. What it meant was you didn't have to emigrate if you didn't want to. Yeah. There was, there, there was jobs likely here. likely a job here for you yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you didn't want to go. But yeah. that was a huge thing. So the sisters Absolutely. were like really widely loved and appreciated in the community. Mm -hmm. But they had like really colourful lives. It's coming over the top of the light box oh, here. Yeah, so the kind Sheila of and Josephine who work here, they're just going through every inch of it to make sure there's no blemish nothing wow. wrong with it if there is they'll Any have to darn it out or, or mend it yeah uh, and then when it comes back from finishing it's you won't see that oh i see so that's really important and then once it's checked it's bagged up uh -huh. and it's going to go over to foxford in the west of ireland for that yes. finishing process yeah. so foxford in um Killaloo. uh no not uh, nothing about that no, no it's in uh mayo yeah. Yes, of course. Sorry, there's another place. Yeah. And then over here, we've got, uh, that's where Dawn sits. So she looks after all the labeling. And then Claire over here, she handles all the packaging and everything that's going to go out uh -huh. where it's going to go. And actually what you've got in the room here are four, uh, th is it one? Yeah, three of the brand new patterns. <laughs> She's very so. excited about <laughs> the brand new patterns. <laughs> the patterns. So the gray pattern you see over there, that's named flannel. So what the designers wanted to do is, like, because we're 300 years old, they wanted to try and capture the whole history of a over the years. So yeah. this goes back to the days of the Duns, yeah. when the only colours that were manufacturing were the natural colours and the greys. So, so that's... to see it in this colour, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So this would have been... Oh, that's lovely. The usual Avoca, yeah, yeah. So These this, would have been like natural sheep colors, though, right? They would have been, would have been, but they would have put in a dye to, to change uh, it to gray as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah, the yeah. red for the army uniforms, but the color was absent, really, yeah, in any yeah. Degree. But that's to evoke the days of the Duns when they were here oh. back then. And then this mohair here is called the Miners, so that's uh -huh. again tribute to the Avoca mines. Yes. And um, most people don't realize that the mines here in Avoca, like for copper and zinc, this is one of the biggest copper mines in Europe at one time. Wow. 
Yeah, it was massive. So that's again to evoke the copper colors. Oh, to, I see. To and then the, the you've got the little green and then the yeah. the, the little copper. Oh, and that's this beautiful. One is called the Winds 1950s. So this is to kind of celebrate the, the ladies from the 1950s. So yeah. it's designed to give you that feeling like it is a 1950s piece. Mm. Beautiful. And there's another piece coming out called the Wind Family that's an awful lot brighter. But that, so these are three brand new pieces. So what we're doing at the minute is they're being labeled up here, they're going to be sent to the warehouse to build up a stock so that when mm. they're launched uh, around June, July, we'll have a to... full stock and a backup yeah. then when they go out to the shops. So these aren't available anywhere just at the minute. Wow. And that's obviously in heavy Johnny Gold. And this is finished already. That's, that's, that's yeah, finished, that's, that's back. Heavy... Yeah, so we cut this last week. Um, all these I cut by hand uh, on Thursday. Yeah. And yeah, they're ready now to be labeled. Amazing. And I have a lovely piece over here to show you. Now, this is the hand woven. This, sorry, this is the hand woven mohair. No. Well, it, no, that's mohair, but it's not. It's, it's not. It's on the power loom. Yes, so that that sky, looms. that blue one, is the yes. only one we have that's oh. actually completely done on the, the sky. Flight. Specifically, yeah. sorry. And wow. the, last, the cabinet here is one of the very first pieces made by the winds here back in the nineteen twenties. Wow. So this has a little bit of a story. So a few years before COVID, BC as we call it then, <laughs> uh, a lady, an older lady came into us and she had this piece here and she came into the shop and said, look, I'm just wondering, would you be able to mend or repair this? Uh, the ladies in the shop were chatting to her about the history of it and it had come from her grandmother down the line. Her grandmother had gotten married and she got this as a wedding present. Wow. And she passed it on to her mum. Yeah. And then it subsequently came down to her as kind of a family tradition. And she wanted to pass it on to her daughter who'd become engaged. Yeah. But in the state it was in, shall we say, very well loved on the other yeah, side over there. It yeah. just wasn't fit to be handed on. So she wanted to know if the girls could repair it here. So Fiona and Vanessa went over, had a chat with her, loved the story, but unfortunately it wasn't repairable. No. And part of the reason for that is obviously this was made with the natural dyes. <sighs> So that's why it has a slightly different colour to the one beside it. So this would have been, they were able to date it back to 1928. Oh my goodness. Uh, so it was one of the very first pieces that was made here after Emily took over. Wow. So this would have been made on the flying shuttle loom. Yes. Wow. So you can imagine the difficulty involved in that. Oh. And the ladies downstairs, Fiona and Vanessa, like they loved the story so much yeah. that actually they decided, you know, why don't we recreate it? Yeah. So this is what we call the heritage piece or the century piece. So this mm. is our interpretation of what the winds were doing back in the 20s. This and is this our best effort at it. This will be synthetic. This is dyes. synthetic. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I know. Oh we're goodness. very excited about it too. It's so exciting. <laughs> so this is our best effort at recreating that. Uh, but as you can see, we you can't match no, the. No. But it, that, that has lasted. That The heritage piece has lasted so the well over the years. colours on that. Yeah. Like... And I you, tried a bit of natural dyeing now, I have, yeah. and uh, it's not easy. No, and uh, you, again, hitting the right mordant and everything is I really know. difficult. So, yeah. But this is kind of in, like, this is magic. Stunning. But I mean, to make that on the flying shuttle, I'd safely say you'd be tearing your hair out. Yeah. <laughs> like on that loom there, making her notes and everything. Yeah. So they've worked really, really hard over like the last year and a half with the new designs and new patterns. Yeah. And then they've had to create six new completely new designs and patterns for the 300th anniversary yeah. as well. Yeah, it's a huge amount of work. So this is where they would yeah, this test is all their... Yeah, go to work here. Wow. Yeah. And this, what's this? Oh, the Ashford. I love Ashford. I've got the Ashford wheel and I've got the extra Ashford... Just a small little six inch head of looms, yeah. a rigid head of looms, so it's really simple, but I'd put it to work. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed our little visit to Avoca Weaving Mills. I'm just looking behind here at us, at the, the different, if you have a look here, this one is inspired by the Italians, Roma. They love the natural tones, apparently. The French love everything thrown in. The UK, quite fond of the blues, and then the Irish are quite natural tones. And then this here is that heritage, um, kind of reinvented one from, you know, um, that uh, lovely piece that was natural dyed, hand dyed. So this is the circus one, I think. Hang on two seconds, let me just double check. Yes, this is the circus throw. It's one of the most popular ones and it's absolutely stunning. I think we actually have one of these. They were gifted to us as a present. Um, and it's just really nice. Like seeing these all now, having been in there, I can really appreciate um, what's come through. There's a beautiful one called Bloom. I don't think it's up here yet, but I really like that one. This is nice. This one now. 
Sorry, I'm holding too many things. A book. Whatever. This is called LW Throat. Don't know what that means, but it's really nice. I like it. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. If you ever get a chance to pop in, if you're in and in, in and around Wicklow, and you get a chance to pop into Avoca, do um, ask for a tour. Very interesting. Alan is so interesting. They've said they've set they've set up these tours just recently. So um, take advantage if you're in the area. It's really well worth it. They're full of knowledge and it's really interesting. And it's a lovely shop. We just had lunch. It was delicious.